Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rob Marsiglio, real estate sales representative with Keller Williams Preferred Urban based out here in Durham region, helping the great people of this part of the province and doing my best to bring you weekly content on this channel covering all things greater Toronto area real estate. Usually I jump into the graphs and charts to show you what's going on with trends, but this week's video is a little different. As you can tell from the thumbnail, I'm gonna highlight some information that home sellers really do not wanna hear in this market. And it's all based on a conversation that I had recently with somebody looking to list their home. Quick note, the cursor is red this week. This is based on some feedback I got in the comments. So let me know if this makes it a little easier to see where my cursor is throughout this video. On to the good stuff or just the stuff. The scenario that we're working with today, a desired sale price of a million dollars. We're going to work on the assumption that our buyer has $200,000 to put down on the property. Monthly heating costs are going to be hundred dollars a month where our monthly property tax is $500 and our gross debt servicing ratio is 39%. And this is all gonna make sense to you as we get into this exercise. First off, what is the gross debt servicing ratio? So I pulled this right from Investopedia. Gross debt servicing ratio is a measure of housing costs versus a borrower's gross income. Specifically, this ratio tells the lenders how much of a home buyer's gross income goes towards their housing costs. How do you calculate the GDS? You will uh, divide total housing costs by your gross income. And those housing costs include your principal and interest on the mortgage, your property taxes and utility costs. That's why we have that heating number. As a little aside, we're gonna just use GDS to keep it simple. And again, like I mentioned on that first chart, the gross debt servicing ratio that a lender is looking for you to kind of fall within is 39%. So no more than 39% of your gross income. So not your take home income, this is your gross income before taxes, before any other deductions. Only 39% of that can be used to pay for your mortgage principal and interest, your property taxes, and your utilities or your heating. The other part of this equation is rates. What is happening with rates? We're going to use this chart from WAWA, a great resource. Links will be all in the description of this video, uh, just to use our TD five-year fixed rate for this example. And what we're trying to really figure out today is, why did my neighbor's home sell down the street back in May? but I can't get the same price today for my property. Scenario number one, today, what is going on? So October 25th, 2023, the five-year fixed rate from TD set at 5.94%. We already went through this top part from desired sale price through to gross debt servicing ratio. We just discussed the rate we're gonna use, which is the five-year fixed rate from TD at 5.94% right now, meaning we have to qualify based on the stress test at this rate plus 2%, at 7.94%, you would need to make a monthly mortgage payment of $6,075. To fall within that GDS ratio of 39%, your minimum income required gross income is $205,000. So today in October, a family needs to be grossing $205,000 to afford your million dollar property. But what was it like back in May when your neighbor down the street sold? Here we go again from Wawa. I used May 25th arbitrarily. This whole bottoming out of this blue line, which is the five year fixed rate, that was for all of May, okay? It, the rate did not change at TD from this 4.89%. Here's a look at our neighbors. They sold for a million dollars back in May. The down payment, the monthly heating, the property taxes, and those gross debt servicing ratios were all the same. But the five-year fixed rate mortgage, like we said, was 4.89%, meaning you needed to qualify at 6.89% for a monthly mortgage payment of $5,550 roughly. Income required to service that mortgage, $190,000. So you can probably see where this is heading. We said the income required now is $205,000. The income required back in May was only $190,000. And here are both scenarios for you side by side. So big difference in qualifying rate, we're qualifying at 1.05% higher, meaning that the mortgage that we need to be able to service today is over $500 more per month. And again, like I said, the income required is $15,000 more per year. So at this point in time, you were talking about roughly an 8% increase in annual income that a household needs to make to afford your home for the same price that your neighbor sold for back in May. What does the math look like today then for somebody to afford your home for roughly the same monthly payments we were making back in May of 2023? So spoiler alert, right off the top, here is the new kind of necessary value to fall within that same mortgage payment at today's five-year fixed rate from TD. 
So to require that 190 grand income and roughly the same monthly mortgage payment, you're going to need to drop your expectations by about 7% from that million dollar number down to $931,000, assuming that everything else stays the same. There you have it. Like I said, this isn't something that all sellers are going to want to hear, but if you're in that situation where you need to sell or you're wondering why am I not selling when I've been on the market and my neighbor sold just a few months ago, this is exactly why. Price expectations need to come down about 7% for that same buyer pool that bought your neighbor's home to be able to afford your home today. I hope that the info in this video is going to be helpful for you in navigating this market and maybe explaining why things have ground to a bit of a halt sales-wise. You can see kind of why this spread is happening and how big this spread is between maybe a seller's expectations and what is realistic for a buyer in today's market. If you have any other questions about anything I covered in today's video, there's always a link down in the description to book something directly in my calendar to speak with me. Thanks so much for sticking with me right to the end of this video. Till we speak again next time, please stay safe and cheers. Hey there, I really appreciate you watching this video all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, I've got another video for you right here on the screen. And you know, while you're here, maybe just click on my face, subscribe to, I don't want you to miss anything going forward.